Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 13 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Today, um, I'd like to continue working towards getting some stuff. More and more stuff. Um, one of the things that I've constantly, well not constantly, but been kind of wanting more of on a regular basis is Ender Pearls. I mean, we've got a few from the Endermen that we kill every time we see them because we need Ender Pearls. Uh, and we've also got, um, you know, this one little dinky plant out there that's, you know, doing its thing. Um, but I wouldn't mind uh, working towards some kind of mob drop system where I can where I can farm mob drops. Uh, and since we don't have Ender.io installed, there's a couple different mods we could use for this, but there is a new mod in the pack uh, that I've yet to actually play with that I kind of want to play with, so we're gonna. Uh, we're gonna take a look at Industrial Foregoing, uh, which those of you who are familiar with the old mod Mine Factory and then the follow-up mod Mine Factory Reloaded, Industrial Foregoing, um, is a spiritual successor to those two mods. So you can see that you have a lot of the same uh, items and blocks that were familiar from Mine Factory, Mine Factory Reloaded, uh, and etc, etc. Uh, not all features are installed, so I don't think conveyor belts are there yet, uh, but a lot of the old stuff is definitely available. This should be a familiar block to you. In order to get started, we're going to need to get some plastic, and the best way to get that is to smelt dry rubber, uh, which is, like, pretty cool. But dry rubber has gotten a little bit different. Um, so we're going to need to get a couple things. Um, we're going to need to get a tree fluid extractor. That is the very first um, object that we're going to have to craft. This will extract uh, latex out of wood, and then we're going to need a latex processing unit, uh, which can convert said uh, latex into rubber. Cool, so we're gonna need to get a few of those machines set up. So let's get started. So the tree fluid extractor, we'll do that first. Uh, just needs an iron gear, a furnace, some smooth stone, and some redstone. Sounds pretty easy to me. Uh, let's get some wood because we're gonna need some of that. And uh, I also need some smooth stone, which might be chilling in here. Good, good, good. So that should be about it. Easy peasy. All right, while we're at it, let's get some uh, redstone conduiting so we can convert or uh, transfer some power around. Um, I'm gonna try and put this outside for a minute because I'm not entirely sure how this block works. I have an idea of how I think it works and I wanna see if I'm right. Uh, so let's pop this dude outside. We're gonna put our latex processor down. Now I'm not entirely sure. So that doesn't appear to be uh, the direction that we want it to face. Do you need power? Maybe you don't need power. That would be cool. All right, so don't use that to pick that up. Let's try putting it in this direction. This thing doesn't connect to power. That makes life even a little bit easier for us. Nice. All right, uh, so let's just pop them down. Uh, I believe the front facing side, we want to place a piece of wood down. And what should happen is it should slowly but surely extract latex out of the wood. Neat. Um, that's pretty cool. So uh, latex tank fluid containers, cool. Oh, by the way, with this, you can specify which side uh, you can insert and extract to and from. That's pretty much what that's for. So um, you can put multiple tree fluid extractors around a single log, and uh, the log will eventually be destroyed. So we might want to do some automation around that. Uh, but let's get, let's see, we do have fluid ducts. I don't know if this thing will auto output, uh, but we will probably find out. And uh, if it does, cool. And if it doesn't, we'll just need some servos and we'll be fine. So you've got latex. So if I were to, for example, uh, oh look, yeah, see, it's starting to break. So you can see the, the wood is starting to be hurt a little bit. All right, so, so that's cool. So what if we did that and we got ourselves uh, a servo? And I'm kind of future thinking here for this. Um, I'd, I'd like to be prepared. So a servo is going, if we, even if we got like the cheapest one, just the iron one, uh, just needs redstone and glass, which we should be able to come up with a couple of these. Let's get, well, that's enough for now. Cool. So we will stick this dude on here. We will set you to always extract and look, we're getting latex. Nice, that's cool. Uh, we'll see how long that, that lasts. Um, so it's really just iron and smooth stone. That's about it. And a little bit of redstone. That is totally 
something that I can deal with uh, making a few of those. So if we made another one of those, uh, which should be totally be doable. Wait, that's a light tax. We want the tree fluid extractor, one of these. So multiple of these extractors can work on the same block. And that is kind of cool. So if I put you there, you will start extracting latex as well, but it'll also break the block more quickly. So if we did something like this, boom, now we've got both machines uh, working on that block. Cool. Okay. That seems reasonable. Uh, I'm thinking we might want like two more. Does that sound like a good idea? Just to like, you know, balance it out. So I'll just grab all five of these, because why not? Um, I just need a little bit more smooth stone and we should be good to go. So basically two more. Of those. Two more of those. And we're good to go. Okay. And we will do... And this may wind up being moved at some point. I'm uh, mostly just testing this mechanic. Then what we could set up if we wanted to is just like a block placer. Uh, either a mechanical user or any kind of block placer that places wood in the center spot here for us. Cool. Uh, I wouldn't mind taking a quick peek. I guess the best place to access this from just to see how the progress is going is underneath. So yeah, you can see it's breaking a little bit more quickly now because we've got four of these things working on it. Cool. All right, so that's step one. Uh, step two, we'll need the latex processor, which I'm, uh, I'm assuming this machine will need RF. Uh, so what I'm thinking is we might move that like maybe underground, especially because it doesn't need power, and we can just pipe the latex directly into a latex processor, which is going to need a machine thingy, so that shouldn't be too bad. Do, 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 do. Block of redstone, one of these, and two of these, and one of these, and we should be cool. Nice. All right, so this guy, pretty sure is gonna require power. Um, let's, let's decide how we wanna design this room with this change in mind. Um, we will just stick this in a corner for now. Wow, look at all this complicatedness. All right, so energy comes in. I guess this is on or off. Cool. This is the, 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 the recipes. Cool. Uh, so this is your energy. This is like you can put batteries in to charge up the machines. This is, uh, all right, so it needs water. All right, that's good to know. It needs latex, uh, which you can put in with cans, apparently. Uh, and this would be the output, I presume. And these might be upgrade slots. Um, and you can also uh, assign each of these you know, slots to be uh, pretty much like, you know, which side you can pipe in and out of. That's kind of cool, actually. That looks good. All right, so if you need water, let's maybe throw this in the basement um, because we do have water down here and like kind of an infinite amount type thing going on. Um, let's get a few more fluid ducts. That's just copper, right? Yeah, copper and glass. Fluid ducts, good to go. Um, we'll put the latex thing downstairs. Let's pick this up. If you finished your, you did. Nice. All right, so what did we get out of that log, by the way? Uh, 1,609 millibuckets. Neat. So we will uh, collect all this good stuff that we made here and relocate this into the basement now that we have a better understanding of how the mod kind of functions. Cool. Meet you in the basement. All right, so what if we put the tree fluid extractors here and here, and you guys could extract your wood, which we will automate at some point very soon. Um, and then we can pipe all that into a portable tank of sorts, which will go like that, 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 and that with the servos. Ignored, 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 
and ignored. Cool. So they're all extracting. And then um, from there, we might want to have a latex processing unit, which is going to need power. Uh, so let's stick that guy like, it's also going to need water. So that's a good thing to know. I might want to run this like, oh right, I've got the water back there, don't I? All right, so this can be where the fluid ducts connect. Let's make sure to disable this so no latex gets confused with water. Same for you. And that should look pretty decent. So that should fill up your water tank. Cool. Now the latex needs to go in here. So let's, uh, I have to get more fluid ducts. Not the end of the world. Just a little bit more copper. Technically, that tank is probably not necessary uh, that I've got there. Uh, the one that's that's holding the excess uh, latex right now. Uh, I haven't decided if I want to leave it or not. Let's see how much latex and whatnot we need, and then we'll kind of go from there. Does that sound fair? So let's do that to disconnect those dudes, and then we can just servo this thing up uh, to extract always. Cool. So you're going to get fluid latex. Beautiful. So now you just need power. Uh, which will happen courtesy of under here. So power is probably... So like, the power from the cell is here, remember? This is the one coming out of the cell. Um, so we'll just run this dude underground. So that should get power now. Cool. And that must be the processing speed. All right. So uh, takes 200 ticks. No. It says 200 ticks. Well, what is that? 200 ticks is um, 10 seconds, right? That's not taking 10 seconds to process. It's taking far less than one. Well, it seems like it's one second. We'll see. All right, so we've got tiny dry rubber uh, that we've gotten from our fluid latex. Want to say it's 100 millibuckets to get this stuff. Um, 75 millibuckets of latex and one bucket of water to produce it. All right, so it uses a decent amount of water and 75 millibuckets. Cool. Okay, so if we want to keep this thing automated, what can we use uh, to place blocks? Uh, let's see, mechanical, so there's mechanical users. We have some resonating redstone crystals, we could probably get that. I don't think that costs extra utilities energy. Uh, how many of these do we have? More than enough to worry about. Cool. So mechanical user needs one of these. Needs one of these. And then the user is good to go. Pretty sure that this thing can just place block, right click, upper left side. So if I did that, boom, easy peasy, right? So now all we have to do is place that underneath um, where that latex dude is and we should be good to go. So let me borrow you for a sec. Break this mechanical user, put some wood in it, Make sure it's in place block, and it doesn't really matter if you specify random or upper left, it, it doesn't matter at all. And we'll leave this on, always on, right? And then boom, look at that. How cool is that? So fully automated, place that back down, we're getting more latex, and then when this block is broken by the tree fluid extractors, uh, another one will be placed immediately in its place. Cool? Uh, so that <coughs> looks pretty good. And we're getting more and more tiny dry rubber. Now this can be combined uh, in, into into dry rubber um, and then that is smelted into plastic sweet so we should be able to do that and we should be able to get ourselves in our smelter some plastic cool so we've got the foundations of industrial four going in place that's awesome. Uh, and we just let those machines down there run for a while. By the way, I, I, I threw another stack of coal into the pulverizer just now. I'm probably getting to the point where we might need to start worrying about fuel in this thing. This guy's all doing its stuff. And they're all doing a great job. They're doing great. But we're going to want to do better. Um, 
like maybe slightly better augments and whatnot. So you can see it's throttling the power output. So that's cool at least. I really like how dynamos do that. Like they self-throttle themselves to make sure that they're not wasting or overproducing power. It's really a nice mechanic. Uh, so that's all exciting and good. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna get two more plastic. Most machines, as I recall, require approximately four-ish of these plastics, right? Oh, they do have, no, that's immersive engineering conveyor belts. I was gonna say, oh, they do have conveyor belts. No, they don't. A wither builder, huh? That's cool. I think that builds the wither structure for you. Very nice. Uh, there's range add-ons. There's all kinds of machines, like all kinds of machines. Uh, that would be cool to have. Um, so if we look at four ring, oh, there's also a manual. I don't know if you saw that, but yeah, there's totally a book. That gives you some infos. Um, so now that we've got industrial foregoing foundations, uh, I was also gonna work towards getting a better sword. Well, not a better sword. You know what I really haven't found a lot of underground at all, even on like hardly any, uh, is lapis. I've, I've been like sorely disappointed in the amount of lapis that I've found. Which is kind of a bummer, because uh, I really wanted to use that to get some better stuff on my sword. Oh well. Uh, what I wanted to work on next was the mob crusher, and I'm pretty sure uh, when provided with power, it will kill any enemy in front of it as if a player would. It will collect the dropped items and it will transform the experience orbs into uh, essence, which then, as uh, assuming that this works exactly like it did in MFR, which I'm pretty sure it does, uh, we can use that essence to power a mob let's see there's lots of stuff here as you can see mob duplicator yeah uh the mob duplicator when provided with essence and any entity and a mob imprisonment tool will spawn uh the mob around it cool so kind of my plan is to set up like a dark room like extra utilities cursed earth mob farm using uh the grinder and using uh, a mob duplicator, we can spawn like Endermen or any other mobs that we need to get more resources from, like Blazes. Um, and, and that would be cool. So um, in order to really get that going, though, we need to start getting the mob essence. Um, and the Cursed Earth is something that I was trying to get towards the end of last episode. What I think I'm going to do off camera real quick is go visit the Nether again. Um, and let's... Yeah, let's head up the Nether... I'm just going to pull this stuff away. Foregoing might need to be added to the filter list. I'm assuming foregoing stuff is going to land in there. I don't think I filtered it to here. Um, yeah, so let's do that. And we'll be back in a few minutes after I get uh, the stuff I need from the nether to create a cursed earth mob spawner. Let me tell you, journey map definitely makes it a little bit easier to track down these guys. You see them on the map, and you go hunt them down. See, there's one over in that channel direction we can see on the map. So hopefully he's easy to find. I finally got one. A drop of evil. Nice. All right, cool. Heading back to the base. It, for a 10% drop rate, I literally had to kill like 30 of those skeletons before I finally got one. But hey, for as many skeletons as I had to kill to get my drop of evil, I didn't get a single weather skeleton skull. How awesome is that? I mean, granted, I don't have fortune on my sword yet, but dude, come on. A little bit of luck, that's all I'm asking for. Not that I need Wither Skeleton Skulls. Yet. Alright, I'm putting the meat creeps to work. I'm gonna clear out a little bit of an area here. Hopefully you don't break my Ender Lily. But if you do, it's alright. I just harvested him, so not the end of the world. Good job, meat creeps. It's fun watching a meat creeps work. It's even more fun having most of them uh, do the same task because they just do a great job of that. Like, you know, they're not like specifically programmed to like load balance or anything, but just by the luck of the draw, they seem to do a good job. So that is cool. Look at that, nice, all right. Got ourselves a pretty well cleared out area. Oh, he did harvest him, nice. Wasn't sure if he would. We'll probably need to move that thing anyway. Like, maybe we just go put it by the other farming area? Because uh, I did literally just, like, uh, right before I started recording the segment, I harvested the Ender Pearl off him. So, we are not losing any progress by doing this. For now, you can live there. Cool? Alright, so, uh, we should probably look at making a, uh, 
a nice little area within which to have a dark room. I kind of feel like that's where I want to go next. Would be like a cool dark room. Um, now, let's do some things. Let's first get ourselves the mob grinder, and we will build a room around the mob grinder. Does that sound cool? Uh, so, from industrial foregoing, we're going to want... Uh, the Mob Crusher, that's what it's called. So we're going to need an Iron Sword, we're going to need some plastic, we're going to need some books, we're going to need some gold gears. I can do most of this, no problem. Let's put away these things that we don't necessarily need at the moment. I'm going to hang on to the dirt because I might want to fill in some areas with dirt there. Uh, we're going to need some gold, we're going to need some redstone. Uh, we're going to need a couple books, which by the way, I stole from a library when I was in the village uh, a few uh, episodes back. And that might be close to being having a Mob Crusher. So one of you going to need a stick... Cool, Mob Crusher, this. And then for a Mob Crusher, we're gonna need one of these. All right, uh, we're gonna need a little bit more redstone. That should be cool. Uh, two gold gears. And a Mob Crusher, nice. All right, so um, this guy, once we place him, we can see the effective range that he can operate in. And I haven't entirely decided how I want this to work out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so let's like just pop him here. I'm gonna put him one level up so that we can see you are facing the wrong way. These guys tend to face away from where you place them. So I think there's a button on the UI here. Show working area, that's what I was looking for. Okay, cool. So that's what the working area looks like. Neat. Now I wonder if I can throw a range upgrade in him. Because uh, there are upgrade slots. Um, in MFR, you could not range upgrade that machine. However, I don't know if that's true uh, about this. So a range upgrade tier 1 needs lapis. Tier 2 needs coal. Tier 3 needs coal. So let's do a tier 2. So just 4 coal, 2 plastic, and any, st any glass. Uh, so I can just use my red stained glass because I don't know what I'm going to use that for. Otherwise, a uh, couple plastic, there you are, and some coal. And I don't know if this will work, no idea, but uh, it's worth a shot. Because if you can increase the range at which this machine operates, that would kind of be cool. So can range upgrades go in here? The answer is no! Alright, good to know. Cool. So we know the answer to that question now. So without the ability to insert range upgrades, which is no big deal, no big deal at all, uh, looks like you're going to want to go on kind of the floor because he doesn't kill things below him, it would look like. He kills things above him, uh, but not below. So like if there was a baby zombie in this room, he wouldn't kill him, right? That's bad news. So we want him to be on the floor, which is actually kind of good news. I like that mechanic, actually. Um, that's that's somewhat nifty. All right, cool. So that's the range. That's the working range for this block. Okay. So with that in mind, there's two things we could do. We could either make the room exactly that size, or uh, we can make the room a little bit bigger and use conveyor belts from uh, Dark Utilities. I don't see them there. These guys, vector plates, basically the same thing, uh, to push mobs into that respective area uh, where they would get killed. That would kind of be cool. Um, so that means we could have like a slightly larger dark room. Uh, and then, yeah, I like that idea. I like that a lot, actually. Um, I don't know that we want the room to be too large, though. Um, so let's do this. Well, I mean, I think that should be a sufficiently sized room. And if it needs to be bigger, we'll expand it. How about that? That's not like a plan. Um, so let's do that. Uh, do I have my builder's wand on me? I don't. Now, at some point, I will probably make this thing a little bit nicer looking. But for now, I want to get the basics down, and then we will kind of... And I know, I know, the, the historical dire is going to make it look nice eventually comment is probably something you guys have heard before. And I do eventually make it look nice. It just usually takes longer than most people would like. Um, but that's okay. 
Right now, I don't have the resources to really... I don't even have, like, the power, probably, to run this thing. I have no idea how much power it takes. We shall see. So, if this was a dark room... Cool. Uh, now, one thing I wouldn't mind having is a nice little peak hole. That I can look in and see what's going on inside that room. Right, so let's uh, turn off this thing. That bothers me. When there's just like a grass block there. And we'll kind of clean this up a little bit shortly. Yeah. That'll, that's like a foundational room. We'll, 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 get, we'll get that better. Um, let's get some dark glass. Let's get some more sand. Well, let's maybe, let's see, what do we got? Uh, Probably need a little bit more sand. Don't tell Bob more. Back in a sec. All right, taking a quick nap, passing the night. Let's get some of this and some of this. That should be plenty of uh, this fancy thickened glass from Extra Utilities. Hang on, Exax, I want you still. Uh, darkened glass. Well, we can look it up this way, uh, is made, we get two, so that should give us ten. So we should have just enough ink sacks uh, to make this a thing. Um, so we'll need a handful more thickened glass, and then we'll be good to go here. I really am going to have to deal with my power very soon, though, because I am using more and more power um, as time goes on. So this should get me darkened glass, which is glass that light can't travel through. So that means that we can put this on the side of our nifty little dark room that we've set up here. And unlike normal glass, uh, this will prevent light from going in. So now we have a dark room that we can see into. Uh, eventually, um, maybe within a very short period of time, I can upgrade this to ineffable dark glass. And the cool thing about that is you can walk through it, but only players can walk through it, not monsters. Uh, we don't have the resources to get lunar reactive dust just yet, uh, but soon. So now let's uh, replace this and uh i'm pretty sure what i can do is so you are going to need to get energy you're going to create essence and you're also going to get mob drops so we're going to have to deal with three sides of this block um which is kind of a bummer so before we get to that i want to look at facades i'm pretty sure they exist in thermal um Covers, they might be called. Let me look into this. Okay, cool. So you make a structural duct and you combine it with any block and it'll act like a cover. So we just need some iron nuggets and a piece of lead. So that seems doable. So structural duct, check. And then let's say we wanted it to look like dirt, we would do this and we get six dirt covers. Neat. Uh, now, out of curiosity, uh, chisel, 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 chisel. Just, just, just to be curious, can we do this with chisel blocks? We totally can. I assumed we could. Uh, so, if we wanted to, we could totally kind of cover these guys up. We might get to doing that a little bit later, but let's do this because I want to make sure that these block light, uh, and that's going to be an important thing for us is if they can block light. So right now. Uh, we're letting light into this room, right? So let's just demonstrate this with these bits. So if I cover you, you don't seem to be blocking light. Which is kind of a bummer. Um, if we want to block light here, we're going to have to do this and this, and that will probably block light. Correct. Okay. So that's good to know. Uh, so if we do want to um, do that, then we're going to need to basically... I'm going to need to run... What I'm going to want to do is have basically fluid on one side extracting, items on the other, and power into the bottom. 
So let me go get the rest of my duct work that I'm going to need. And then we're going to have to cover that up in a way that prevents light from getting into that room so that dark rooming can work. Uh, so we're going to want you, and we're also going to want item ducts. Uh, we might want a few more item ducts, um, which just needs some tin and some hardened glass. We might have some hardened glass. We have one. It's enough for now. So item duct. And then we're definitely going to need more leadstone energy conduits. We'll do six. And you might have more glass for me. Oh, no, that's right. I was making thickened glass. I don't think I can use thickened glass in the ore dictionary for that. Nope. Pulverizer. There we go. Redstone furnace. So just a couple pieces of glass and we'll be good to go. So I want to get this machine working uh, and functional before uh, we get to the part where we start making the dark room work. Cool. Okay. The other thing we're going to want here is probably a crate. Thought I'd gotten an eight there, but my bad. Let's get one or two more pieces of wood. And with industrial foregoing, we can automate a lot of stuff, which should be cool. Perfect. All right, so crate's good to go. Let's go outside here. I don't think crates block light either. Um, so what we'll probably want to do then, it would be kind of nice. I'm going to do this. And I'm gonna do the fluid on this side and the power on this side. And we'll do the item ducting here. Now I'm pretty sure this won't auto extract, so we're gonna need some servos in a minute. Uh, but the power can go in and that can kind of run. I'm gonna try and find my way. There we go, found my way, nice. So there should be power lines somewhere around here. Totally. There we go. So I'm gonna just tap into this line. Good. Uh, and you needed to come up where? Here? There we go. So that should get power to that guy, which is cool. There we go. Good deal. So you should have power now? Perfect. Stored energy, 50,000. I guess it's just listing it in Tesla, but that's or dictionary, so it's fine. Uh, fluid, we'll probably want a tank. So I'm thinking fluid. The tank of mob essence can sit next to the crate of uh, item drops that we're going to get. So let's get our tank. I'm pretty sure we have an extra one laying around. And servos. We have a couple of those as well. Um, and we should be good with this now. So what we'll do is... Uh, I don't know if the tank is going to be... Is going to be a light blocker. Because I kind of need to put a solid block right here. Um, yeah, it would be cool if I could put the tank there, but then light's going to get into the room, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, so I guess let's put the tank here. And maybe once we uh, get a little bit higher in the technology, we can uh, make this room a little bit nicer looking.
cool. Does that work? Uh, and if we really wanted to, we could even facade this, I'm sure. Boom. And then put the tank on top of the facade. And that's kind of neat. Not bad. If we wanted to do this, we could facade this guy too. That should work, right? And then we've got that and that going on. And this room is dark. If I... Uh, it's a little bit light bleeding in because of the underneath bit. Hmm. Back in a sec, let me cover that up. So what if we took a slightly different approach? Um, and we did this. Signalum plated item duct. Cool, because you'll still get power now, and then items can pipe out the bottom here. Um, and with that, the only thing we have to worry about is the fluids, which we could, uh, if we wanted to, pipe out the back. So I'm running into too many lighting issues here. So if we wanted to do this, uh, so that should be signal on plated lighting duct. Cool. Okay. So these are now both solid dirt blocks, right? So then we can have an item duct here, right? And the signal on plated item duct, just to make sure that we have this already, can become you. So you'll pipe that out. Um, and you can pipe into, let's say, a crate that sits right here. Uh, and then for the fluids, uh, we can just have a fluid duct and the tank like that with a servo like that. And then we don't have to worry about all that covers and whatnot, because now the only, the access is below and behind. So we don't have to worry about, you know, keeping the room dark. So that should be cool. All right, one other thing I want to do, uh, and that would be have an on-off switch for this room. So I'm just gonna make a simple vanilla redstone lamp. I know, dire and vanilla, right? Who to thunk? And uh, we will go place that in the very center ceiling of this room. Um, and that will serve as an on-off switch that we can activate whenever we feel like it. So like right here can be the lamp, right? So that testing, right? The switch will be outside, but dark, light, nice. So we'll put this on the roof. Now it prevents mobs from spawning in there, basically. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn this into a, a Cursed Earth mob farm, and then we're gonna wrap up the episode. Cool. So I'm just gonna need that uh, bit of Cursed Earth production, which is the drop of evil we got from the other doohickey. There it is, withered. Skeleton dropped this item. Now, the way this Cursed Earth works is, as soon as it's dark in this room, which it's not at the moment. Wow, that had a much larger radius than I would have thought. Much larger radius than I thought. Pretty sure, as long as it's daytime, we should be fine. And I thought it, like, like burns up in sunlight. Pretty sure it does? I didn't expect it to get out of the room that much, but that's cool that it did. Uh, probably could have encased the room in cobblestone and that would have stopped the spread. Oh well. Don't you like disappear in sunlight and whatnot? Come on, sunlight, do your thing. Kill the cursed earth, would you? If it doesn't do that anymore, then I'm just gonna have to do it myself with, uh, it says no tool. Pickaxe seems to do all right. How about this? Works for me. Back in a sec. You know what I could do? Ooh, nobody panic. Nobody panic. This is actually a really good idea that I just had. This. Three by three is a small area, and I don't think I can make it any bigger. But remember... It gives us this. How cool is that? So by doing this, we get the Cursed Earth, which we can then use later to make another Cursed Earth mob spawner if we want. Because this stuff will spread in darkness. So that would be cool. I don't know why you're doing a bad job. Just want to make sure that you're all taken care of here. No Cursed Earth, please. Spreads in darkness. 
Might spread in light as well. But we do this, and now we have a bunch of cursed earth that we can use later on if we need. By the way, mobs that are spawned on cursed earth are nasty, so uh, do yourself a favor and try not to derp this up at night, because you will get killed by them. They have like increased speed and increased damage and all kinds of other increasedness. That is terrible and awful. So I'm just trying to warden this all off out of block. Really? I'm out of dirt already? Wow. All right. Back in a second. All right. Lots and lots of cursed earth now. <laughs> I think I've got like six stacks of the stuff, but uh, that's cool and exciting. Nice. And I think I've cleared it all out. So let's turn off the dark light, or, or turn off the light, make it a dark room. Uh, wow, I completely missed clicking that lever, didn't I? There we go. Now it's dark in there. So mobs should spawn pretty quickly and immediately get killed. There we go. Nice. Uh, by the stuff. And we've got mob drops. Nice. That should, in theory, be getting extracted and sent into here. Perfect. Ooh, nice. Hear it happening in there? Beautiful. And we're getting mob essence, which is cool. All right, definitely wrapping up point. We are well past that point. Uh, but we now have automated mob farming. I don't know how much this uses in terms of RF, uh, but we will probably very, very soon need to start talking about getting more power than we currently have. But for now, it's wrapping up point. So Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.